Hello. This is the fourth video of my Tinkercad series. Um, please start with the first video on setting up your account, the second video on the starter lessons, the third video on creating uh, Minecraft party glasses, and now the fourth video. Um, once you're logged in, which watch those other videos, make sure you have those skills. Make sure you have a mouse if you have one, especially. If you click on learn, just like before, we did starters here. You want to click on lessons. We did the Minecraft party glasses. If you're interested, check out that video. And then we're going to do chess pawn today. All right. So if you click on chess pawn, I'm going to click restart projects because I've already done this. I want to make sure it's a blank slate for you. All right. Then what we want to do is we want to just click right here and we get started. As always, the directions are going to be on the left hand side of the screen. This is your workspace. You use your mouse to move around. Make sure you do the starter lessons so you know. It says in this lesson, you will learn to design a traditional chess pawn. Let's get started. So I'll click next. It says drag a cylinder shape to the work uh, workplace. So we've always used the box. This time we're going to use cylinder. Now ask yourself, why would we use this one instead of this one? Pause it. Think about it. See if you can figure out why. So the reason why is this is a hole and this is a solid shape. So if we were to, uh, you know, if I had a box and I put this hole along with it and we grouped them together, what it ends up doing is creating a hole in that shape. And that's not what we want. Now, if you make that mistake and you say, oop, I dragged the cylinder over, obviously you can delete it and click on it and hit backspace. That'll get rid of it. You can also just go up here and change it to a solid. So any hole can become a solid, not a problem. If it's not lined up perfectly, change your view and use your arrows to get it where you want it. I don't know if that one matters on there. We'll click next. Scale it smaller to a height of three millimeters. Now we could click on here and just grab this and change it, get it perfectly down to three. Or you can click on it, click on that box, press three and press enter. And now it's to a height of three. We hit next. Drag a work plane to the top of the cylinder. Shortcut W. So if you look over here, that doesn't make sense. But if you look up here, it says work work plane. So it says drag a work plane to the top of the cylinder. Now that's going to be a little confusing. Let's see how it goes. It has this little shape. That's where it wants a work plane. Let's see what it wants. So we drag a work plane and we put it right here. Hopefully that worked. Looks like we've got two work planes. All right. Let's see where they're going with this. So drag a cone shape to the top of the cylinder. So now I'm going to change my view a little bit. I'll grab the cone and I'll drag it over here. All right. The new shape will land on the work plane you just created. Now I have a different way where you can do that as well, but that's cool. I like setting that work plane. That's nice. It makes sure it's perfectly on top of that. All right. Click next. Select the shape shorter. Scale, scale the shape shorter to a height of 11 millimeters. So we're going to click up here and we want it 11 millimeters. So we click and we type 11 and I press enter. Perfect. Notice that the base stayed the same size, but it scaled it down. Drag a sphere shape to the work plane. So I'm going to grab a sphere. I'm going to change my view just to make sure I'm looking at it nicely. And we're going to drag that so it lines up perfectly. Now, if you dragged it and it was in the wrong spot, just use your arrow keys until it's perfectly lined up and you can move around it until it does. There's another way to do it too. We could always highlight everything and click a line. Oops, click a line. And then we could say, okay, I want everything right on top of each other, right in line with each other. That's a great way to do it. Um, if you mess up, you can always press undo. All right, so we got that. Drag a, a sphere shape to the work plane. Scale the sphere to a diameter of 18 millimeters. So if I click it, you'll see diameter, diameter is the distance from one side to the other side. Radius is the distance from the center to one side. And then the circumference is the distance around it. So we want to change the diameter to 18 millimeters. So that means we want it. Let me make sure. Okay. We want to make sure that the uh, that both of these are 18 millimeters. So the best way is click a corner, type 18, 
tab button, which is right over caps lock, type 18, enter. Now we've got a sphere. Now they say squish it. Scale it shorter to a height of five millimeters. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to say five millimeters. Now, I don't feel like that's not what they want, actually. I'm going, the reason why is that doesn't look like the palm that I saw. So I'm going to press Control Z to undo that. And I'm going to click this. Let's see if it scales it differently. And it doesn't, which is interesting. All right, well, let's see what they want. This is part of learning. Right? This does not look correct to me, and I know something's wrong, but let's see what they say. Drag a cone shape to the workplace. Okay, I'll drag a cone. And click next. Scale it to a height of 28 millimeters. All right, so it needs to be taller. So let's see if I drag this up to 28 millimeters. Perfect. Now I'm noticing something. I'm noticing that it looks like they actually want the base to change as well. So I don't think I'm doing this correctly. Hmm. So to correct that, I don't know. Let's see. Now it says a diameter of 14. So we'll click this and we'll say 14. Maybe this is correct. Well, it's important to double check yourself as you're going. You want to make sure. Does this look like what they're asking me to do? Because as you're learning the skills, you want to be able to copy things. Once you get better, then you're able to create things. So far, everything looks right except for this sphere. We might have to go back to that. I'm not a big fan of how that looks. Move the cone to the target orange area. Lift the cone three millimeters off the workplace. Now, this work plane, this was not in that tutorial. I'll show you how to do it, though. So we're going to get it right there, centered. Looks centered to me. Then this thing right here is how we move it up. And we want to move it up three. And you'll see that number at the bottom. I wish you could see where I was looking right now. This bot, this right here, it says three. So that is where we want it. Now, is that in line? It looks like it is. Awesome. So this, <laughs> this sphere, is, something's wrong with it. We might have to click back. Drag another cone to the target area in the orange. So we drag it in, overlap it, use the arrows if you can't get it there. Click next. Scale it to a diameter of 12 millimeters. So I'm going to say 12. Press tab, 12, press enter. If you can't do it that fast, practice what I've said, right? Go back in the video. Oops. Go back in the video and uh, and see how I'm doing that. Perfect. I, I expect you to learn this as we go. I, I want to make the tutorials faster as you gain skills. I don't want to waste your time and I want you to gain the skills. And I, I expect that of you. So if it's a little confusing, rewind it. Obviously, you can ask me questions, but all right, scale it to a taller, it taller to a height of 19 millimeters. So I'm going to click here. I don't click here, right? Because if I click here, that's that's going to move it up. They just want to change the height, which is interesting right now. It says make it taller, but it's already 20. So I guess we're making it shorter. So I'm going to change it to 19. Remember. Programmers make mistakes too, right? Websites aren't always perfect. It's a great website, but I had to make that shorter. Rotate the cone 180 degrees. So to rotate it, we click. This is a good view for it. If we were here, we couldn't do it. And you'll see this little thing here. We're going to click and drag until that number says 180. That means we flipped it completely around. Okay. Move it to the target area in orange. Awesome. So I'm going to move it over, but now I'm realizing it needs to go up. So I'm going to move it up so it's perfectly in line with that. Now I rotate around and we'll see, oh, that's not lining up. So I'm going to use my arrow key. I'm pressing left to get it over there. We rotate around it. Looks awesome. This does not look awesome. And what I'm thinking right now, let's do this. We're going to highlight everything. So I left click, highlighted everything. We're going to align it. I'm guessing that's what they wanted. So we're going to align it here and we're going to align it here. And what that did was it centered that. And that looks a lot better to me. I think that's what they want. And now I'm realizing this is not in line. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. But all right, maybe that's a programming error. Can't get it perfect. That's OK. Can't always get what we want. All right, it looks great. Drag a work plane to the top of the cone, which is really the bottom of the cone. So right here, they want a new work plane. So you can zoom in if you want. If you don't have a mouse, 
you may not want to because you're not able to do this. Maybe you can figure out that shortcut and comment below. Click on it. Now we have a new work plane. So now we have three work planes. We have that one up there. Oh, the other work planes disappeared. Interesting. Maybe because it's highlighted right now. All right. Drag a sphere shape to the work plane. Okay. So now I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to drag a sphere. I'm going to try to put it right where it goes. It's not perfect. We can make it perfect by putting the arrows over. Looks pretty good to me. I can't get it perfect. I wonder why. Maybe if I change my snap grid to 0.5. Let's try that. Ah, there we go. Changing that snap grid, it makes it move in smaller increments. Perfect. If you don't know that word, look it up. Increments. Scale the sphere to 8 by 8 by 8. So it needs to be 8 tall. And then 8 by 8. So 8 tab 8. Enter. See these shortcuts save us a lot of time. Hold shift on the keyboard will scale the shape in all directions. That's cool. So I'm going to undo this. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. Now what they're saying is if I hold shift, I drag. Look at that. It makes the whole thing equally smaller. That's perfect. I love it. All right. So that's hey, that everybody learns something new every day, right? If you're not. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe do some more stuff. All right. I'm going to use my arrows to try to get that in line. It may not be the best way of doing it. We'll see. I'm pressing my left arrows. <laughs> it's definitely not the best way to do it. That's okay. All right. This is perfect. Ah, oh, look at that. If you couldn't do it, play around with it. Look at it. Drag a work plane to the original location of the work plane. <laughs> Tip, place the work plane anywhere except on a shape to reset it. Okay, so it seems like they're just saying grab this and let go. Look at that. So now we have our original work plane. Oh, that sphere ended up great. This is looking nice. This I think this is smaller than what they showed us, but we'll see. Now we hit next. It says select all the shapes. We're going to align them. We did this earlier, but we're going to align them again. So we'll say align, which is right here. All right, align the shapes to the middle and the front. So we don't want to do this because, wow, that'll mess it up. I mean, maybe you like it. Looks like some sort of dart of some kind, but I'm going to press Control Z to undo. We are going to align it here, and we're going to align it there, and now it'll look perfect. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe we can move it so it is perfect. There we go. Look at that. Awesome. All right. Click next. Select all the shapes. Click the group button. So I already have it as selected. You can click again and drag. And then it wants you to group them together. All right. It's going to change the color. But remember, this is a 3D design. Uh, they were all separate. And so now they're all together. And it says you will know if the group action worked if all the shapes all became the same color. And it is. And if you don't like that color, you can actually click here and change the color. So maybe, ooh, I want it multicolored. I love the multicolor, but it's still one shape. I want to make it a little transparent so we can see through it. I want to make it green, whatever you want. You can play around with it. It's your shape. It's your world. Uh, really cool stuff. Little bonus to this video. Uh, those of you that like Minecraft or Legos, uh, you can actually, you can click and you can see it Minecraft style. So I can click blocks up here. And I would want to make it a lot bigger, but it can show it just like it's in Minecraft. Now, what can we do with that? I don't know. Play around with it. Maybe there's some things. There's this export thing over here that just saved the schematic. I don't know what I can do with that. Maybe you could look up on uh, Google with your parents' permission and see what that schematic could do. Maybe you could move that directly into, into Minecraft. That would be pretty cool. There's also a uh, Lego one. This one might go slowly if you're on a Chromebook. Um, but it'll show you how to build your shape. Now, obviously, this is not perfect. Um, I like I like my original a lot better, but that's okay. All right, then we hit next. Look at that. We did it. The stars might even happen if you didn't do a good job on it, but remember, hold yourself to that high standard because you can do a good job, all right? If you were having trouble, try it again. Watch the video again, And uh, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Now is your turn to start your own. So to begin your own, just go back to Tinkercad, the main page, 
It's a little cold in here. Sorry. Click create new design and you're just going to get a blank canvas to work with and you can start making your own things, right? Some things that I've made, um, I've made a sign for my radio station at school. I have made clout glasses, obviously. I've made signs, uh, like plaques to print. Uh, buildings. I, I made a little piece for a bike that now I can generate electricity using that mount and a motor. Lots of cool, excuse me, lots of cool things that you can do. So I don't know, do your best. If you need help, watch the video again. Otherwise, I'm always here to help. Have a great day. Wash those hands. 20 seconds.